In this video, I'm going to show you how I turned this garden shed into this awesome hobby room. I'm Benji and welcome to Benji's Hobbies. As you can see, this was a fairly typical garden shed. At only six feet by eight feet, it's not the biggest and it was used to house all the typical stuff that ends up in your garden shed. Power tools, tins of paint and other stuff that just isn't welcome in the house. When I built this shed some four or five years ago, I had grand visions of this becoming partially a hobby room and partially a workshop, but unfortunately those plans never really came to fruition and it became more of a storage space instead. If you look closer, you can probably see small glimmers of what I'd hoped for it to be. Some abandoned terrain projects, some unprimed miniatures, you get the picture. First, I need to sort out the current contents, and to help with this, I had to build myself, you guessed it, another shed. So my lean-to shed has its own lean-to shed. I've got a bit of a problem, I think. Whilst this isn't a huge job, I did decide to do all the heavy lifting on what turned out to be the hottest day of the year. To say I was a little bit sweaty is an understatement. With a nice blank canvas to work with, it was time to start turning this humble shed into what will become my new hobby room. The first step was to insulate the walls and ceiling. Whilst the temperature in the UK are absolutely fine in spring and summer months, it does get a little bit cold in the autumn and winter and I wanted a hobby room that I could use comfortably year round. I opted for the thickest insulation I could fit between the uprights and the shed, and whilst I could have saved some money and gone with thinner insulation, I wanted to make sure this room stayed as snug and warm as possible even during the coldest winter spells. I decided to use Kingspan for insulation, you terrain builders will know this stuff, it's like a foil backed dense foam board. Whilst it is significantly more expensive than polystyrene sheets of the same thickness, I felt that in the long run this would probably be worth it as the insulation properties are so, so much better than cheap alternatives. I packed this between all the uprights of the walls and across the ceiling to give me a nice snug room and any small gaps were filled with expanding foam to stop any drafts from getting through. The next task was lining the room. I did think of a lot of options for this, including plasterboarding and plastering, but instead I opted for 12mm plywood for the walls. This would give me a solid wall structure and make it easy for me to attach paint racks and shelving to at a later date. I cut these to size using both a circular saw for the longer cuts and a jigsaw to make the smaller cutouts. I thought this would be a pretty straightforward job, but there were a lot of small cutouts to make sure it fitted snugly. Plus, moving these 8x4 foot sheets into place on my own in the limited confines of the shed wasn't the easiest, but with a little forceful manipulation, I got there in the end. After giving the walls the old Duncan treatment and giving it two thin coats of interior paint, I was ready to move on. I had some specific plans for the end wall, so rather than using ply, I used OSB board which is quite a lot cheaper than ply. OSB stands for Oriented Strand Board, and it's made up of various smaller bits of wood compressed together with adhesive. If you like the look of OSB, I know some people really like that industrial look. There would be nothing to stop you from lining your entire shed with it, but personally I had a different aesthetic in mind. I wanted to build a pallet wood wall. Not only would this look fairly stylish, if you're into that sort of look, but I hoped it would create an awesome backdrop for when I was shooting talking head videos. To get this effect involved breaking down pallets, knocking out nails, cutting off the more stubborn nails, and giving the boards a good sanding. I didn't want them to be entirely smooth, but it was important to buff out any rough edges or splinters. I used annular ring nails to nail these to the OSB wall. I tried not to think too hard about the placement of the boards, but tried to mix up the thicknesses, colours and variety a little with each row. Whilst this was probably the most time consuming part of this build, for me it was one of the most rewarding and I'm hoping it will look as good on camera as I think it does in real life. When I built this shed several years ago, I had used old floorboards so there are a few small gaps which let in a draft when it gets windy, 
and whilst I had completely insulated the rest of the room, it felt like I would regret it if I didn't insulate the floor as well. So you guessed it, more kickspan sheets. To finish the floor, I used some cheap oak effect laminate flooring, which is super easy to lay down and not only will it protect the insulation, it'll also make the floor easy to clean after those inevitable noiled noil spills. And with that, although it's looking a little bare, it's starting to look like a hobby room rather than a shed. Next up is adding us some storage and a hobby desk, and where better to get furniture from than trusty old IKEA, the home of meatballs and the Billy bookcase, but only after navigating our way through the soft furnishing maze of course. I wanted to make sure that I had plenty of storage space to store my pile of joy, hobby materials, books and painted miniatures. Whilst this doesn't look particularly organised at the moment, basically because it's not, there should be enough room here to keep everything nice and tidy. Perhaps I'll take a closer look at how I organise this in a future video. My desk is made up from some leftover worktop from when I built my kitchen, mounted on top of two IKEA units, which have plenty of space in them for tools and other useful bits and pieces. I know I was going to need quite a few sockets in here, not only to plug in my desk lamp and tools, but also for filming equipment and lights, and possibly a small heater in the winter. I could have just run a spur off the kitchen electrical ring, but I wanted to make sure that I could safely plug in all the equipment I needed without overloading the circuit, so I decided to install a garage consumer unit and give it its own ring. From the consumer unit, I ran the electrical cables through this plastic conduit to all the power points that I had already screwed into place. I decided to run cables through conduit rather than through the walls to make it a little bit easier to track where the cables go and make it that little bit easier to add extra power points in the future should I need to. With the power in, the shed is almost finished. Just a few finishing touches left such as screwing on the paint racks, attaching my computer monitor and I'm ready to start using my shed for its intended purpose. I hope you enjoyed watching this project come together. It's something that I've been working on a lot over the last several weeks and while sometimes it's felt like a real slog getting to this point, watching all the footage back whilst editing this video has made me realise how far it's come and I can't wait to start spending some time in here doing what I love. This has been an incredibly rewarding project from start to finish and overall I'm really pleased with the results. It's probably cost me a little more than I had originally planned on spending but I feel like the extras were absolutely worth spending now that I've seen the end result. Over the next few weeks and months, I'm going to be posting up some of my hobby projects and things that I've been working on. So if you've enjoyed this sort of video, make sure that you're going and clicking that like button. And as I'm a brand new channel, make sure that you are going to click that subscribe button as well. So I hope to see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.